10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The more I call him, the better I feel. Jesus. Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. And it says, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals. Yes, yeah, stay with me right there. That sounds so good. That the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for wisdom, 
So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid from God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the man and said, where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he asked, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man replied, the woman you gave to be with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. You can give me a sin or shot and I'll be good, Brother Cameron. Thank you. In verse 11, God asked the question, who told you that you were naked? Today, just for a few moments of my time, I want to minister in your hearing from this particular subject. I shall be delivered from my shame. Look at your neighbor and say, today. Come on, say it like you mean it with authority. Today. I shall be delivered from my shame. Have you ever noticed that one decision can change the course and the direction of your life? Every decision you make will have consequences and repercussions. Some that are good and others that will spiral off into other things. It's amazing to me today that when you mess up, the devil will make you feel that you are not Worthy to be in the presence of God. Adam and Eve had daily fellowship with God. And one bad decision changed everything for them. But today I shall be delivered from my shame. It's very important to know that the devil is a master deceiver. The Bible records that he is the father of of lies. Yes. And the witnesses in here that they can testify of that? It says that he is the author of confusion, strife, and turmoil. Anybody ever dealt with strife and turmoil in their lives? He will tell you one thing that will get you caught up in a web that's hard to get out. If you know anything about a spider, a spider uh, will create its web wherever it is to uh, put his place of territory showing his dominance. Yeah. And a spider will grab uh, what it has put its sight on to bring them into that web. But before they bring them into the web, the spider will take and cause that thing to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up so that it cannot get free. Because once that spider gets you in the web, there is no coming out. But that's how the enemy is. The enemy is like a spider. He will get you tied up in things from a bad decision and make you feel like there is no restoration for you. He will make you feel like you cannot come out. He will make you feel like it is the end of the world. Am I the only one here today that can testify that I have made some bad mistakes in my life that just was not good? And I'm trying to tell you today that some mistakes will put you in a place where you are ashamed to be around others. Some decisions will put you in a stronghold in your mind, 
making you think that you are a defeated foe, but the devil in hell is a liar. It's very important for us to know today that when we hear this word, you got to make the declaration that I shall be delivered from whatever it is that I have been going through. Whatever it is I've been dealing with today is my breaking point. Today the shackles shall be broken. Today the prison doors are open and I'm coming out with the victory. Can anybody testify that you are coming out with the victory? We've always heard in church, don't wait till the battle is over, but shout right now. When you shout, the walls in your life must come down. When you shout, you get victory. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas that was incarcerated for doing the work of the Lord. And immediately they begin to pray and sing praises unto God. And the Bible says the prison doors was open and everybody's bands were loose. Not just their bands was loose. But the people who was connected to them in the same cell. And I come to minister to somebody in this church today and those who will be watching me via our broadcast that today is your day of freedom. You shall be delivered from your shame. This is the last day you're going to carry this shame in Jesus' name. Shame, it's a mental block that is used to keep you locked up by what has happened. It could be something that happened many years ago, but you've been locked up in the prison of your mind because you've been trying to get free. That family member that touched you and every time you've kept it a secret and every time you go around the family, you see that family member, you begin to cringe because you remember what they did to you, even if it was when you was a child. Or you feel abandonment because a parent has walked away from you. It ain't just the men walking away, but women walk away too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you have been hit with all kind of words that has brought you into a place of condemnation. Y'all know the spirit, the same sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie because words will cut you deep and words will last longer than the moment. My preaching is here today. It's so devastating because every time you go around the situation, it seems like it's a repeated cycle. And it's like you're trying to get free, but you're going around the same mountain over and over again. And you're wondering why you keep seeing the same thing. It's because you are not changing the course of your life. I've lived in Atlanta for many years, and while living there, Sister Lisa, uh, there is uh, 75, we lived in 75 North in Ackworth, Georgia, 75 North, and then to get to Atlanta, you had to drive to 75 South. Now, they had the Interstate 575, they have Interstate 85, anybody ever been to Georgia before? They have Interstate 285, and Interstate 285 is just a big circle. If you don't get off, you will continue to see the same thing. And I'm trying to tell you today, the reason why you still been stuck in your shame is because you won't get off that interstate that you've been on and change the course of your life. Whenever, whenever I'm driving, I would have on my GPS, even if I know where I'm going, because sometimes the traffic can get a little heavy, and sometimes I may have to turn down a road that I did not prepare to turn down. Sometimes I'm going to get on another street that wasn't in my route, but when I make that turn, missionary Ernie, whenever I make that turn, my GPS is always going to get me back place where I need to be and I'm trying to tell you today that your shame has taken you down a road that you never thought you was going to go on but God got a GPS to get you back where you need to be raise your hand and shout glory 
I declare that you shall be set free. Yes, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. There are those who hear my voice and have made some decisions in your life that does not feel good. You've been caught up in a tight place looking for relief, but just couldn't get out of it. You just didn't know what to do. It was in 1995. Hallelujah, y'all know pastor love music. Hallelujah, they should have called me DJ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, 1995, there's a group that's called Escape. Hallelujah, sister supervisor, you know who I'm talking about. Hallelujah. And Escape wrote a song, Who Can I Run To? Anybody know the song? It said, Who Can I Run To? To share this empty space? Who can I run to? When I need love, who can I run to to fill this empty space with laughter? Who can I run to when I need love? Y'all know the song? Y'all know? Sometimes we ran into the wrong arm. And you love him. You love her. But they brought you to a place of shame because what you thought was a lifetime brought pain and agony. And so now you're caught up in your emotions and you're trying to figure out who can you run to. And so now you're in a relationship with Frankie and Johnny. And Frankie and Johnny is telling you two different things. And the whole time he's telling you, let her have it. Y'all know Frankie and Johnny. Hallelujah, let her have it. And he's saying, you have it, but what is he letting you have? He's letting you have things that's not bringing glory to God. When I say you say, he say, we say, let her have it. Hallelujah. And that's how the devil is. The devil said, let her have it. He's sending his demons and his imps on the loose to come and play with your mind. Yeah, I got him right now. I got him in his mind. Oh, it's all over for you. It's about to turn back. You're trying to figure out how you're going to come out. But God said today, 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 today is your day of a breakthrough. Shame is that uncomfortable situation we feel when it seems we have no safe haven from the judge. Everybody know how to point a finger at somebody. And when people are ashamed, they don't like to come around nobody because they want to carry their shame alone because they feel like everybody knows their business. But the truth of the matter is, everybody don't know your business, but yet it's the shame that the enemy has been beating down upon you. Yeah. Shame puts you into a place of depression. It locks you up that I can't get beyond this moment. It will have you at home locked up in your room with all the lights out and you're in your room crying and going through all kinds of thoughts in your mind because it seems like nobody knows and nobody cares. But I'm trying to tell you that depression is an enemy from God. Not from God. It's an enemy to the things that God has prepared for your life. And so you cannot let the enemy get you to a place of depression. Why? Because it will bring you to a place of bitterness. Anybody ever had some lemonade that was just a little bit too bitter? Yeah, yeah. That's how life is sometimes. Sometimes life will put you in some situations where the things that you are tasting is just too bitter for you to consume. I don't know if any of you are, are like my children, but whenever I would give them some medicine, they would say, can I get some water? Can I get some water? Because they want the water to chase down the medicine that's going down. Could it be you are watering down your deliverance? You're watering it down because you are forsaking the assembling of yourselves with other believers? 
Could it be the reason why things have not broken? Yet it's because you're trying to fight this fight on your own. But the Bible says fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life. The word of the Lord also says, cast your cares upon him because he cared for you. So while you're trying to carry this bitter cup, you got to say it's time to let it go. I think you better let it go. Anybody ready to let some stuff go today? Yeah, you're wondering why you've been sick in your body. It's because you have been carrying this shame. And I'm trying to tell you, when you carry things like this, it will begin to eat up at your mind. And as it begins to eat up in your mind and your mental state starts to think differently, then it's going to begin to manifest in your actions. But I want to declare over your life today that today is the last day that you are going to be carrying this shame. Somebody say, deliver me. From this low down dirty shame. On last Sunday I had an opportunity. To preach. At a historic church in the city. And I was able to introduce. Family members from the church. To my past. Reverend why was it freedom? It was freedom because I'm not stuck in my past no more. See, 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 your past, it beats down on you when your past is still alive. Yeah, see, that's the problem that many people face. Many people, they have their past, they say they want to be free, but they're keeping it on resuscitation. Live! 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 And it's been over for years, and yet you keep pressing. Live! 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 Why do you want your past to live when God said that that thing is already over? You've got the mistakes that you made on the canvas of your mind, but it is over. When you say, Father, forgive me of my sins, it's covered and washed under the blood, and he will remember it no more. But see, God remembers it no more, but you do. And that's the reason why the devil keeps whooping you because it keeps playing over and over and over again on the canvas of your mind. But I'm trying to tell you today that today is your day of victory and you shall not live the rest of your life in shame. It was at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that there is healing at the cross. Even Jesus to redeem mankind back unto God. Hallelujah. And to come down in the form of man through the womb of a woman to step into the earth realm to bring restoration. And he went through shame on the earth so that you won't have to go through the low down dirty shame. Yeah, they put, they put they the crown of thorns on his head and it made him carry his own cross as they beat him and his body was torn and his flesh was ripped and he was bleeding out yeah yeah they spat upon him he went through shame so you wouldn't have to go through it somebody lift your hand into the room today say Lord thank you for taking shame even before I was able to walk the earth somebody put their hands together and thank God right there Hebrews 10 and 14 it states for by one sacrifice he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified the cross represents Jesus death He hung, he bled, and he died, but he didn't stay there. He got out with all power in his hands. He went in the grave, and he took the keys of death and life, and he got the keys, and he gave us the keys. So he gave us keys to open up prison doors 
so that we don't have to go through condemnation. And I'm trying to tell you today that there is freedom in Jesus. There is healing in Jesus. There is restoration in Jesus. There is open doors in Jesus. It's time for us to get out of here and go home. But I'm trying to tell somebody today that healing is available for you. The shame that you had to carry, the embarrassment that you had to go through, the things that have been encountered in your mind before people and you thought it was going to be around for a lifetime, but the devil in hell is a liar. Why? Because the shame is being broken. Jesus became both our high priest and our sacrifice. Our sacrifice so that we can go free from the things that we have been going through. So that we can go free from the things we have been dealing with. So that we can go free from the storms and the snares of life. When I encountered Jesus, I was in a real place in my youth where Everything was so pure for me. But as I got older, I began to learn some things that didn't bring glory to God. Yes. As I went through these things in my life, hallelujah, I was in a place of shame and agony and embarrassment. And I called myself trying to hide from the people in the church. Because Sister Missionary Ernie, Missionary Ernie, I didn't want nobody to know what I was dealing with. Because that's how the enemy plays with you. Hallelujah. Cover yourself. Hide yourself. Don't go to church today. Don't go. No, 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 no. They going to know. They going to know. They going to know. Y'all know they got that district missionary. She going to see something in the spirit. She coming to lay hands on it. And you're staying home because you are embarrassed by what you're going through. And nobody knows what you are dealing with but you and God. But I'm trying to tell you today that you can break free from your shame. Why? Because the work has been finished on the cross. Hallelujah. It was at the cross where I first saw the light. I saw the light. I was in darkness, but now the darkness is over. Hallelujah. And it is now the light of day. Anybody ever gone through a tunnel? Hallelujah. And it may seem a little dark. Hallelujah. But as you got closer to the end of the tunnel, it seemed like you saw the light on the other side. I'm trying to tell you right now that you may be going through a dark season in your life right now, but if you keep moving forward, I'm telling you, the sun is going to shine. I'm not talking about the S-U-N, but I'm talking about the S-O-N. I said the sun is going to shine. It's going to shine bright. I see your true color shine in truth. The Lord shines make a way. The Lord shall deliver. The Lord shall set free. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. But rising, 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 he justified and freed me forever. One day, Spot on wrinkle. Live the Lord to say yes. 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 Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him through your storm. Praise Him through your agony. Praise Him through your disappointment. Praise Him through your shame. Because when you praise Him, the burden. He destroyed the earth. I will bless the Lord at all times and His praise His praise shall continue
continually be in my mind. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I pray that your word has fallen upon good ground and not stony ground. Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that as we go through this series, Father, I thank you right now that you are lifting the spirit of shame. You will not spend the rest of your life locked up from a bad decision. We all have made some bad decisions. But the difference is, others didn't stay in a bad decision, but they made a decision about to move. His blood was already shed for you and I, but he's not going to force himself on you. You got to want to give yourself to him. That's why the songwriter says, I give myself away so that you can use me. I give myself away so that you can use me. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. You got to give yourself to Christ. Hallelujah. I ain't say give yourself to the situation. Hallelujah. But you got to make a conscious decision today. You know what? It's, I, I've been dealing with this too long. I'm going to make a change. Yeah. And I know, I know, I know, you know, when you make a decision, amen, sometimes the change does not happen overnight, but you got to go through the process. That's like you, you spent your life accumulating debt. You spent your life accumulating debt. You got all these credit cards and you got all this debt. Charge it here. Charge it. Charge it. Charge it. No, you had the money to pay it back. How do we charge it? Charge it. Charge it. Charge it. Charge it. Charge it. And then you come to the realization that you want to bring balance to your financial state. And then the first thing you got to do is start paying this debt off. It's not paying overnight. The only thing that's paid overnight is the forgiveness of your sins. That's paid off immediately. But then you got to go back to the situations that you messed up and clean them up. You can't be around your house. How do you just take your clothes off and you just throw your clothes on the floor and you put your clothes everywhere. And man, I'm going to clean this house. I'm going to clean this house. And you keep saying, I'm going to clean this house. I made a decision. I'm not living like this no more. I'm going to clean this house. I'm going to clean this house. And just because you made a decision in your mind, your house is still filthy because you haven't gotten up to clean it. And so, you make intentional decisions with the word of God to clean up your house. You thinking I'm talking about your natural house. I'm talking about your spiritual house. Because so many times we worry about what's going on on the outside. And the inside is toe up from the floor. God clean me up from the inside. Is there one in here today that's not saved and you want to be saved? I offer you Christ right now. I offer Christ to you. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? I'll